What's up? Hey, today is a special day. I'm going on an adventure! A bloat busting adventure, if you will. I've struggled with bloating on and off, but around this time last year, it started picking up in intensity, it started picking up in frequency. Sometimes the bloating was visible, sometimes it wasn't. But what frustrated me the most was how helpless it made me feel. I wanted that bloat gone, I wanted it gone fast, which can be a difficult task when you are new to your digestive journey. Lucky for you, I now know my trigger foods, and I'm gonna test every bloating fix so you don't have to. Before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. The Daily Symbiotic is a probiotic plus prebiotic capsule, and while probiotics are often recommended as a bloating fix, they will not be included for the purpose of today's video. I'll explain why a little bit later on, the science behind all that jazz, but for now, I'll put a link to the Seed website in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first order. When you think of bloating, you probably think of this. With before and afters like these, the term bloating is often used to describe abdominal distension. And while about 50% of people with a sensation of bloating also experience abdominal distension, the term bloating describes the feeling of increased abdominal pressure without an increase in abdominal size, while distension describes the same feeling of pressure but with a measurable increase in abdominal size. Bloating does not necessarily equal distension. There does not need to be a measurable increase in girth in order for you to feel bloated. As in, just because you don't look like the pictures or videos online doesn't mean that your bloating symptoms are any less valid. The digestive process is complex. Depending on the nature of your you're bloating different digestive fixes will target different parts of this process. So what I've done for today's video is I've rounded up the most common strategies for fixing bloat, the ones that promise the fastest fixes. That's what we're going to test this week, breaking down the science, the mechanism, how it works, if it works, all that jazz. So if you're ready to get started, make sure you shoot me a thumbs up and let's get into it. Now that we know what a bloating fix is, it's time we understand the how. How are we evaluating each fix to determine its effectiveness? Considering the lack of standardized testing or treatment for bloating, I've created my own mini experiment to evaluate each. Because I know which foods bloat me, I've planned a meal packed full of these ingredients to ensure I trigger bloating symptoms. And so each day of the experiment, I'll eat the same meal in the same amount, and I will then evaluate each fix by rating perceived bloating and measuring abdominal distension at set intervals following each meal. My theory is that the most effective fixes should reduce symptoms the fastest. What is up? We just got to the grocery store and today we are establishing our control conditions. Because I'm the only subject of this experiment, we do not have the luxury of testing on multiple people or multiple groups. We will be comparing how I react to each of the bloating fixes or test conditions. Now the idea of establishing a control is it's like a reference point, right? If we trigger my bloating symptoms and we were to do nothing, that is the control. The benefit of establishing a control is that now we're not only able to compare the effectiveness of each bloating fix versus each other, but we're also able to figure out, okay, are these doing something beyond what my body would have done had we just left it to its own devices? <laughs> Jeff is currently making the dough. I'm gonna get things going with our marinara ingredients that hopefully you can see back there. Both these recipes we make regularly. Jeff's stomach is nowhere near as sensitive as mine, so he has pizza almost every weekend. The marinara recipe was my favorite until I realized it just didn't vibe with me, so I'll link them down below if you wanna try them. Hopefully you don't have a sensitivity. Like that, dinner is ready. I have got three slices of this pizza. The slices did come out pretty big, so this will probably be enough for me, as well as a little cup of marinara for dipping in on the side. Not gonna lie, I did test, taste, test the marinara ahead of time. It's so good, I've missed this so much, I can't wait to dig in. Three slices of pizza, probably seems small and maybe a bit confusing if you've typically associated bloating with something that happens following a large meal. However, as discussed earlier in this video, not only does bloating not have to be accompanied by abdominal distension, you know, getting that food baby, but bloating can also occur regardless of how much food you eat. Three slices of pizza is a normal sized portion for me. I'm not trying to overeat. We know what happens when we overeat. More food in your stomach means more pressure in your stomach. More food to digest means more time digesting and potentially feeling backed up. We don't need an experiment to see this. And so the fixes that I share, the information I share in today's video may help you get things moving following a bout of overeating. I wanted to keep this experiment as authentic and as accurate as possible. 
Personally, I do not enjoy overeating. And also, if I were to intentionally overeat each day of this experiment, there's a chance that there may be carryover effects between conditions, making your results less accurate and harder to interpret. <laughs> Good morning to everybody except my stomach. I just finished my morning ride and I barely made it through <laughs> without taking a bathroom break. It's not even midday. I've already been to the bathroom three times. These were not number ones. These were number two, three, four. You can imagine for yourself. It has not been a good morning. <laughs> Quick update, my body is behaving in a way that I did not expect. I don't know if the garlic is acting as a cleanse, a laxative, what's going on? But like, we are incredibly well digested right now. I am feeling a lot better than I thought I would. We just wrapped up some filming for Instagram. If you're not following me there, I'll put my handle somewhere around the screen. We have Riker here. Now we're gonna go play some basketball. <laughs> Based on my research, apple cider vinegar may be one of the most controversial things on the internet right now. Nobody seems to be in agreement over how to take it, when to take it, or how much to take of it. However, based on what I found in most sources, I'm not gonna pretend that these are credible sources. This is a joke. I use credible sources, but I'm making a joke about the lack of research on many of the purported claims of apple cider vinegar. I did my best, I did my research, I worked with what we had, but there is a lack of literature. From what I could find, there have been a few studies done on the direct effects of vinegar consumption on blood glucose and insulin levels, as well as the indirect effects on gastric emptying, which describes how long it takes for food to move from your stomach to your small intestine. For the purpose of today's video, we're not so worried about blood glucose or insulin levels, but we are concerned about gastric emptying because the longer it takes for food to move through your system, the longer we're going to be dealing with those feelings of heaviness, puffiness, bloating, all that jazz. Bringing it back to the studies, a relationship had been observed between vinegar consumption and lower blood glucose and insulin levels. And so the researchers wanted to understand why. What was the mechanism? While these studies are dated and they weren't necessarily ideal, it seems as though delayed gastric emptying, slower digestion, following consumption of vinegar played a role, which would be in line with a 1990 study that suggested gastric emptying is sensitive to acid exposure and the resulting changes in pH in the small intestine. So what does this mean? Well, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, any other acidic or tart tasting detox drink that you see online may actually make bloating worse by slowing down digestion. We'll see. I chose shot glasses that felt fitting for the occasion. So we're just going to eyeball this. We're going to be one to two tablespoons. Ooh, one to two tablespoons. Okay, you can run this one. Can you gonna do this with me? <laughs> you gonna do this with me? I don't wanna do it. I have to take one? We've gotta do this to unlock this. I didn't sign up for this I video. know, I know you didn't sign up for it, but you really are appreciated around here. I appreciate you. I'll do that if I can get a soda. You can get a soda. I don't have any more. We will do a soda. I will walk to get you a soda. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a head start because I just need that off my palate. That is literally the worst. My preliminary recommendation is do not do it, even if I say it works. Day two, how we doing? This is how it's looking. The apple cider vinegar was disgusting. And while I don't think it made my bloating any worse, it definitely didn't make my day better. But I did want to take this time to touch on the topic of de-bloating, detoxing drinks, anything from celery juice to lemon water to apple cider vinegar, because they're often not as they appear. As we've established, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, acidic ingredients on their own, may actually slow gastric emptying, thereby working against our deep bloating efforts. Which raises the question as to why something like warm water with lemon juice is so popular is claimed to be a bloating cure-all. Well, it probably has more to do with the warm water than it does the lemon juice. Gastric emptying is temperature sensitive. Warmer meals, warmer drinks can help accelerate move digestion along a little bit quicker. While lemon juice can act as a mild diuretic, meaning it can help you get rid of excess water, in the amount that you'd be adding to like a glass of warm water, a couple tablespoons, it's probably not a significant enough dose to see an effect. As for celery juice, it's packed full of nutrients. It's a natural diuretic packed full of sodium, potassium, magnesium, all of which can be helpful in maintaining a healthy fluid balance. However, we come back to dose, unless you're planning on chugging, and I mean drinking a lot of celery juice, this is a standalone solution for bloating, may not be that effective. As with any claim, it's important to remember effect size and effective dose. I'm sorry, I couldn't wait today. This is the best pizza we've made. This is so good. 
<laughs> For the context, if you're wondering what stretching, self-massage, and exercise have in common from a bloating standpoint, they all involve some form of physical touch or movement to alleviate pressure. Think external solution to internal problem. Some of the most common symptoms of bloating include impaired gas transit, think gas getting trapped in your intestines, not moving through on its own, impaired colon transit, constipation, and so the idea is that by moving things around, they may continue moving on their own. Well, we're gonna kick things off with a lymphatic massage by lotion. Just give a little bit to my legs. Gently press with both hands on right and left side of low abs. Come right here. I swear I'm going over like a bubble. Ah! <laughs> I don't like that. You seem to be a big girl. Lightly trace counterclockwise circle two inches away from belly button. Counterclockwise. This is clockwise. This mm -hmm. is counterclockwise. Yeah, it's doing a lot of like right there. I feel like I need a stomach mic right now. I feel so nauseous right now, even if it doesn't show, but we are staying the course. We are doing the exercise. Um, some of the recommendations online suggest exercising and sweating out the bloat, which don't even get me started on the science of how this bloat is going to evaporate from my body. As a reminder, bloating does not describe one symptom. There are many symptoms that can be associated with bloating, including water retention, but sweating out a meal probably isn't the most accurate way to describe how exercise intensity and the resulting changes in blood flow, body temperature, and hydration status impact digestion. As you're probably starting to notice, there's often no fast and lasting fix to these issues, but for now, let's continue. Today, I think I knew that realistically. So I'm gonna leave on the sweatsuit. It is also a lot hotter in our house than it is outside, and I'm going to hop on the bike. <laughs> so I'm a child, and my stomach's upset, but uh, we learned that farting in a vinyl suit sounds hilarious. Can you rate that last one out of 10 on your hands? What is that? I can't see. Seven. Seven? You think I can do better? I love the challenge. Clearly love the challenge because that is what this video has been challenging. But I want to talk about gas because it's icky. It's uncomfortable. Literally some of the worst stomach pain I've ever had has come from trapped gas. So here's what we know. Impaired gas transit is a common symptom of bloating, trapped gas, okay? And mild activity has been found to improve gas clearance while reducing symptoms of bloating. Great. While there's likely more than one mechanism at work, one theory is that most forms of exercise require either engaging or bracing through the core, which increases abdominal pressure and can help move gas along. This would also explain why gentler forms of exercise like belly breathing or yoga with an emphasis on deep breathing can help give relief from bloating symptoms. All right, a damn tomato checking in after an hour. You may or may not be able to see this on the bike. Oh my gosh, I am on fire. Look, my legs, I don't even know how to describe it. Just all of this, like you can see, I've made my rain pants see through. There's literal like bubbles of water, of sweat in here. Day three, baby, how are we doing? Well, based on how quickly all values return to baseline, exercise has been our most effective bloating fix so far. The reason I structured this fix in the way I did, putting gentler, lower intensity activity closer to mealtime and moderate to higher intensity activity further away from mealtime is that as you saw, you know, we tried to go for a run. We really did. It didn't work out. It wasn't for a lack of fitness, but a lack of digestion. If you've ever had the runs while running, you know, you get me, but not all exercise is created equal when it comes to digestion. Important considerations would be exercise intensity, especially as it redirects blood flow away from your gut and toward your muscles. Exercise impact, are we bouncing around a lot? As well as how the exercise you're doing affects hydration status. There is a lot of science, especially as it applies to digestive issues in runners. They're very prevalent. We're not going to get into it right now. If you'd like a separate video on that, tips, anything along those lines, maybe let me know in the comments down below. But in general, exercise is great. It is a great tool to use to help get things moving along on your own terms. If you've eaten recently, if you feel that things are a little undigested, but you are ready to get moving, start slow, gradually increase the intensity. And then if you feel symptoms coming back on or you're feeling a little bit nauseous, slow down, 
we're back off complete. What is up? We are currently on the go, hunting down a couple of our bloating fixes that I swear I've seen at the grocery store before, but it's like Murphy's Law or like the, you know, pack an umbrella so it doesn't rain, but like when you don't have an umbrella, it rains, whatever that rule is. <laughs> Okay, so you can't hear what I'm saying here, but I searched the natural and regular tea aisles at another grocery store, and what I found was that the use of the word detox was very inconsistent. Detox teas contained any combination of laxatives, diuretics, and or anti-inflammatory ingredients with very vague descriptions. And so if you didn't understand which ingredients and which dosages you were looking at, even if they did list that information on the side of the package, you're really rolling the dice. If you get a detox tea that has some lemon, ginger, orange peel, you're gonna have a relaxing time. Whereas if you end up with something that has center leaf, licorice, root fennel in it, you're probably going to be chained to the toilet for at least the next 24 hours. So we ended up at an Asian market, which by the way, they have the best teas, best snacks. I could live here, but I settled for a tea containing center leaf as this is the main ingredient you'll find in most cleanse, detox, or insta famous teas. Some things I'm hoping you're starting to catch on to. One, bloating is complex. There are many things that can cause it, many symptoms that can arise from it. Two, because of this, bloating often doesn't have a lasting, quick, and easy fix. It's not as simple as just make this detox drink. Well, what's in the detox drink? Are those ingredients effective? Are those ingredients dosed in an effective amount? What are the short-term impacts? What are the long-term impacts? Is this something that you can do sustainably? In my experience on my own digestive journey, what I've come to realize is that most bloating fixes are actually just short-term solutions. A few months back, I tried a low FODMAP diet because I was at the end of my line. Foods I used to be able to eat were now causing what felt like worse and worse symptoms. If you're not familiar with a low FODMAP diet, I'll link my videos down below. Basically, it's an elimination diet that involves removing huge amounts of food that may be causing symptoms, then eventually reintroducing these foods to see which cause symptoms versus which don't for you. Now, what I found kind of crazy about this diet is that while it's often recommended for people with gut-related issues, there's no clear path to rebuilding or improving your gut health once you've gone through it. Not to mention many of the high FODMAP, like off limits foods are foods that you see traditionally recommended for improving gut health. Things like legumes, yogurt, beans, whole grain pasta, cauliflower. And so on the one hand, while I was managing my symptoms by cutting out all these foods, on the other hand, I was not addressing or resolving the underlying issue. I talked about seed daily symbiotic at the start of this video where symbiotic means probiotic plus prebiotic. Probiotics are like bacteria that are found in your gut that when taken in the right amount can have a positive effect on your overall health. While prebiotics are like food for the bacteria in your gut. Each capsule has a capsule within a capsule design. They call it a two-in-one via cap. Just as your gut is sensitive to different temperature drinks or different types of exercise, the bacteria that live in your gut, as well as the bacteria in this capsule, are sensitive to their surroundings. Many products, whether it's a supplement or a food product or whatever it is that are labeled as probiotic, either don't contain a scientifically effective dose of bacteria or cannot deliver that scientifically effective dose of bacteria as it gets broken down, either by your stomach acid or digestive enzymes or the surrounding environment on its way to your gut. Seeds Biocap technology protects against this with prebiotic outer capsule designed to protect against oxygen, moisture, and heat, meaning that no refrigeration is needed to keep the clinically and scientifically studied strains of bacteria in the probiotic inner capsule safe on their journey to your gut. If you'd like an updated video on what I'm doing to improve and rebuild my gut health, let me know in the comment section down below, but seed has become a part of my daily routine for total body health. Taking probiotics can help synthesize vitamins, regulate metabolism, suppress inflammation, improve immunity, and the list goes on. But it's part of a larger lifestyle change. There are no fast fixes. As much as probiotics are often recommended as a bloating fix, the issue isn't that they're ineffective. The issue that the, is that the mindset that there's going to be a single thing that just like cures your bloating, that is ineffective. I am focused on feeling good long-term and building a foundation of health for the rest of my life. So if you would like to check out Seed for yourself, I'll put a link in the description box down below, as well as a code to save you 15% off your first month's supply. <laughs> Ooh, baby, makeup is off. We are filming a little bit later tonight because we are doing a high risk fix. Here we've got Triple Leaf brand, super slimming. I think that's supposed to be slimming tea for men and women. Take a little look. Hi, I was gonna do a voiceover here, but I just feel like I have to mention, of course I found a way to screw this up. When I was opening the tea bag, I have now torn two of these tea bags open. So I just decided we're gonna put one of the broken tea bags in here, which again, may be a terrible idea. To be honest, I think all of this is a bad idea, but yeehaw.
Day four actually went okay. Nothing happened after I drank the tea initially until the next morning I woke up it felt like my intestines were swimming and then we had landfall it was violent all day long this tea terrorized me once it started it was definitely effective sure but this would fall under what I call a fast fix this is a better packaged laxative do not fall for the marketing most over-the-counter laxatives and detox cleanse or weight loss teas of this nature work in a stimulant laxative fashion what this means is that they force your gut to contract to push things out. While this might work here or there, like, I mean, you do you, I can't stop you. If you use them too often, you can develop a reliance on them, decreasing muscle tone and nerve response through your intestine, creating a whole new set of gut issues. So overall, no, I do not recommend this to you. No games. This is our final day and our final fix, and I am so ready to be done with this. But today on deck, we've got digestive enzymes. I'm gonna have a couple of these before we have our pizza. Something I'd like to share, I literally just opened these. There are 90 capsules, whatever, that doesn't matter. But look at, that's really at the end of my line. Look at the size of the vessel. Now, look inside. See those capsules that you can barely see because they really didn't need to use a bottle this big? This stuff drives me crazy. It says one capsule. Take it before eating so the enzymes get there before your food to help break down your food. Last day results. Nothing wild, but I am so grateful to be done with pizza. It's crazy how I went from excited to just no. Digestive enzymes though, they're often confused with probiotics. So quick comparison. We'll start with what they have in common. Both digestive enzymes and probiotics work within the digestive system. Both improve gut function, both support immune function. Now getting into what's different. Digestive enzymes are not alive. An enzyme is not a living thing. Whereas probiotics are living bacteria. They're microorganisms. For digestive enzymes, each enzyme has one job and acts on specific types of food to break them down into easier absorbed nutrients. This as compared to probiotics where each strain of bacteria wears many hats, has a different job to do whether they interact with immune cells, gut cells, nutrients, or existing bacteria in your body. For digestive enzymes, your body can produce these naturally. Probiotics, not so much. Digestive enzymes can also be obtained from raw foods and supplements, and probiotics have to come exclusively from raw foods, outside contacts, your environment, or supplements. Enzymes break foods down into smaller, easier to absorb nutrients, while probiotics protect the digestive tract. Unless you have a specific food sensitivity, the effects of taking a digestive enzyme probably won't be immediately obvious. However, if you do have a sensitivity, say to dairy, because digestive enzymes have one job, they target one type of food, you can get a digestive enzyme that targets specific dairy and you may notice an immediate difference. All in all, digestive enzymes and probiotics can work together. They can complement each other, but they are not the same thing. Results. This has been a long week, but let's talk about it. Day one was our control condition where we did nothing. Day two was apple cider vinegar as a representation of detox drinks. Day three was stretching self-massage and exercise. Day four, detox tea, but let's be honest, laxatives. And day five was digestive enzymes. Based on our measurements, exercise and detox tea were the most effective bloating fixes. They reduced symptoms the fastest and in the most significant way across this experiment. However, the key difference is that exercise is a habit that can be part of a healthy lifestyle to manage bloating symptoms. While detox teas, let's call them for what they are, laxatives, I would not recommend using ongoing or really even at all. One of the things that I found most frustrating about my detox tea experience was that I did not know when it was going to hit, when it was going to stop. I felt completely out of control, which really isn't an improvement upon the way that I felt when I was struggling with the bloating symptoms. You're trading one symptom for another. Of course, it cleans you out, but what happens after that? What I like about exercise is that we know moderate to high intensity exercise, especially if you're feeling a little bit undigested, is going to get things moving along. If you start to feel nauseous, if you start to feel not so good, you can just drop the intensity. You're still in control. How quickly you get things moving is completely up to you. As for least effective fixes, definitely the apple cider vinegar and digestive enzyme. Apple cider vinegar all around was just not an enjoyable experience. I mean, research aside, we know that it might slow gastric emptying. The moment I took it, it left like a heartburny feeling at the base of my, of my like, you know, the esophagus, right? It didn't feel good. Jeff and I were immediately burping for no reason that we could explain. I don't think we swallowed a ton of air. It was just not great and definitely not worth it considering that the pros did not outweigh the cons. As for digestive enzymes, as I discussed earlier, unless you have a specific sensitivity, you might not see an immediate benefit. To my knowledge, I don't have a specific sensitivity. There are foods that I noticed generally cause bloating, but these were foods that 
like even a year ago didn't cause symptoms for me. So I think it might be more so to do with having a sensitive gut that maybe is sensitive to certain groups of food. I don't really know if I took the digestive enzymes longer, maybe I would notice a more significant effect. All in all, just as weight loss and getting fit aren't quick fixes, healing your gut and feeling good for life are not gonna happen overnight. But the way I see it, the time's gonna pass anyways, okay? The sooner we start building the foundation, the sooner you can start to reap the rewards of feeling good in your body. I am so grateful that Seed reached out to partner with me on today's video. I have been making science backed content for years. For years, you and me as a community have been working to work smarter, not harder. And so the fact that a company that is like at the forefront of science is running their own clinical trials, wanted to collaborate with our community, I am so flattered. I am so honored. I am so grateful. So if you have found my videos helpful, if you have benefit from them, if you are interested in seed, please click the link down below. It helps me. It's going to help you. I'll include a code to save 15% off your first order. That's it. That's all. Thank you for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video.